All right, now we come to the really juicy part of these tutorials, the Element Inspector with all its amazing numbers and wonderful things. Remember, we can hide and show the different inspectors by pushing the Properties button uh, for the, those ones, or the library, or the samples, or whatever. I've made the library show that my head has somewhere to be without covering up things. <laughs> okay, whatever numbers are set here or are all referring to the element that has focus. We're going to be looking at the Dragon Roars element, and I'm going to go through every little button. It's going to be detailed but satisfying. Fantastic. There's, first of all, let's go across here. There's an import samples button. This is what we shall use later when I look at samples to import our own samples that we have created. Hooray! It's going to be really excellent. And we can actually bring in our own voice acting or whatever we like or music that we own and all those sorts of things. There's a duplicate element that very simply you just click duplicate and it makes a duplicate copy of that element. So then you can have two different versions of that. So often I might make a red dragon, a dragon roars element with lots of rah and it's really loud and busy. Then I might make a duplicate and call that uh, dragon roars distant. In fact, let's do that. That's, that's what I'll do. So I'll take in this element, which is made for combat. So there's lots of them and they're really loud. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to modify that by duplicating it to be Red Dragon Roars Distant. Change the name, and of course we're making a Brown Dragon, aren't we? Brown Dragon Roars Distant. Okay, fantastic. Copy to sound set. We can actually copy this element to another sound set. And I have a sound set which is mine called My Sound Set. I select it, and I copy. The server works away. And now that element is actually in this other sound set. Yep, there you go. Brown Dragon Roars. So that's one way you can move elements around between different things. Different places. Good, back to here. Uh, delete. You can, of course, delete an element. And delete it and it disappears. There's a kind of a warning. But we want to keep this element because it's wonderful. You can set the name, which you saw me just do before. Initial volume. That's the volume that the slider appears at when this sound set first loads in the player. That's not really very important, but sometimes you want to just be able to touch that element and start it. And probably we don't want this element to be loud by default. So we're going to set that to be a bit lower. The sync initial volume, actually say we've mixed it for some reason and we've been listening to it while it's been playing and we like it to start at 69%, we can just actually click that, boom, and it changes that dial to match to be in sync with what's actually over here. The reverb preset, right, we want this to be distant. So we're going to choose a bit of a more echoey reverb. That's nice. Awesome. Enable 3D positioning. Now, if we if we uncheck this, all these directions and distance and all these settings and all the speed settings are all going to disappear. And each of the samples is just going to be played back right on top of the listener. But we want those. Maybe we want this to be just behind. From west to east, but only behind. So in the surround, if you've got surround speakers, it will be from west to east, but in that direction behind. If we have this set like that, then the samples will all come out in the center of the speakers. Excellent. If we have it set over like this, then it will all come from the western speaker. Excellent. If your speakers are plugged in the right way around, or your headphones are on the right way, and if we have it set over here, then obviously it will come from that side. My speakers are plugged in the right way, I discovered. Fantastic. Good distance. So at the moment, this dragon roar is appearing each time it's played anywhere between one to three meters away. And this is meant to be distant brown dragon roars. So I'm going to set that from 20, 10 to 30. Notice I hit the edit button, I modify the numbers, and I hit dunk to commit it here. Or I can actually just drag these dials. Okay. That's too distant. Now I can't hear it. That's a cool effect. Sounds much more distant, doesn't it? But probably a bit too distant. So I'm going to bring it back. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's nicer. Good. You can also set the speed of a sound. So you can start the sound a long way away and have it move at, say, two meters per second towards you. Or you can have it start close and move away. And you'll actually hear Doppler effect, which is the effect of if you have like a trumpet sound and you make it go past you. It's a bit hard to hear with a short sort of grumble like this, but it's very, very useful for sort of ghost noises, which appear and then come sort of zooming past. You can have multiple ghost noises sort of appearing in the surround spectrum, which is super cool. These effects work in stereo as well, but obviously they work really, really well when you've got your system plugged in via HDMI to your decoder at home. Fantastic. Sound effect is kind of the normal kind of element, uh, type of element that has all these settings available. Music is a very similar one, but this the, the music elements all get sorted to the top uh, of a sound set. And there's a few other things that happen which are ideal for music. And one shot turns this element into a one shot that will not play unless I trigger it manually. That's fairly straightforward, isn't it? Let's go back to sound effects so we can um, show the other things. Right, what order do the samples? Down here is a sample playlist with all the samples, which we shall talk about later. What order do they play in? This one is at the moment set to random. Now that means each time it goes to play an element, a sample, it will pick up, my brain keeps exploding. Each time it goes to play a sample, it will pick up a random sample from all these samples. There's 20 of them or so. And it could play number two, then it could play 14, then it could play two, and then two, and then two, and then two, and then 20, and then 10, and then two. That's random. Or it could be set to sequential which means it will play the samples through in the order they're appearing in this list. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, or it can be set to shuffle, which is like uh, it, it'll play two and then 14. And it can't play two again until it's played all the other samples. And it'll play like 10 and 11 and 3 and 9 and 7 and... I'm losing track. And then once it's played all the samples, it will then start continue choosing, but it um, will then reshuffle them again each time it plays through all the samples. And then play them all again without and not repeating one until it's done that one. And that's that, that's kind of the normal ways to do samples to uh, avoid uh, any sort of obvious repetitions. We have set Sirenscape so it can't get through all the way through a shuffle sequence and finish the last sample with two and then start the next sequence with two. It's not allowed to do that. Repeat when playlist is exhausted. Okay, so once it's played through all the samples once in shuffle mode or sequential mode, it then will go on and then play them all again. Or if that's unchecked, it'll just play the 20 samples once each with all the positioning and timing, which we'll talk about soon, and then the element will stop, which can be very useful for some, some specific sound design um, requirements, and we do that too. Awesome. Right, first sample delay. When this element is started manually it plays a sample instantly which is what you'd expect but when it's started by a mood the first thing it does is wait a random amount of time between the minimum and maximum volume uh, maximum wait times so if we create let's create a mood boom, that just has that one element playing Okay. I've lost it. There it is. Okay. Good. Now, if I stop that mood or push the stop button, I've set it to play the first sample somewhere between two seconds and 37 seconds. Let's play that one element. It starts, and the first thing it does is wait and play a sample. So if I set that to 30 seconds, 220. Okay, I'm going to start this. And the first thing it's doing is waiting a long time. And we're not going to sit and watch it. It's really important to set a first sample delay time uh, so that all the samples don't just play straight away, which would be really, really weird. Like if every single event all happens simultaneously. And you can actually sort of set up nice sequences of events. Like there might be a collapsing building that plays. And then there's a scream that happens at 1.5 seconds after that. And then there's a 
guy that shouts out, I'll go and get help. It happens at three seconds and then 45 seconds later, the fire engine arrives or something like that. And that's what these first sample delays can be really, really useful for. Once that sample has played, how long does it start? How long does it wait until it plays another sample? And at the moment, this one's going to wait two to five seconds <laughs> once it finally gets there. But let's change that to uh, five to 10 seconds. Are we gonna, no, we're not going to wait. Right, so I'm going to start this uh, element by itself. It's going to play a sample, and then it's going to wait a random amount of time between 5 to 10 seconds. And it's going to play another sample, and this time it's going to wait another different, ah, sweet, random amount of time. Okay. There's a little bug in Chrome where I, I lose the ability to scroll, in which case all I have to do is zoom in a bit, which I do by holding control and do my scroll bar, and then zoom back out again by holding control on my scroll bar, and then I'm able to scroll. It's just a little hint. It, this bug mightn't be there anymore when, when you start using it, but it might also be. We can also crossfade the samples. This is more appropriate for, say, long uh, single samples or water swooshing samples. Uh, rather than play a sample and stop, and then leave an awkward silence, uh, and then um, and then play the next sample. You can actually overlap the samples. It will do an equal power crossfade between those samples. That's such a cool effect. And then you can basically set the length of that crossfade. Oh my gosh, that's pretty epically amazing. You can set the length of that crossfade um, by that, that dial there. Stop! This one was acting super weird because many of the samples themselves were shorter than two seconds. So then it's doing stuff like trying to set, you know, to start an infinite number of samples uh, all at once. Remember that stop button is very, very useful. And if you really get yourself tied into Tangle and you've got some uh, overlapping samples playing or sometimes elements get stuck on, just kill the online player and restart it, and then you'll you'll be out of the woods. I think that's everything to do with the element inspector. If I've missed some things, then uh, ask questions in the comments, and I shall endeavor to answer them and or replace this uh, video completely or add a little addendum or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty much covered most things. Oh, there was a wasn't there a wasn't there a count from start? Hmm, take off the... Uh, there we are, count, uh, one, one more thing I had missed, count delay from start. So rather than playing a sample and stopping and then waiting a random amount of time from then, it can actually play a sample and start counting the timing for the beginning of the next sample. And that can also be useful for all sorts of situations. I mean, once you, if you really want to know how these work, then search around Sirenscape and uh, find an element um, that actually uses some of these settings. In fact, I might put the names of some of them in, in the um, comments and you can sort of play around with them and see the different effects and work out why you might use those settings or why you might use other settings. I love this stuff. It's so geeky and awesome. See you in the next tutorial where we'll be talking about samples and importing them. Hooray. That's where we get really juicy. Bye-bye.